Okay, this is our AP Stats uh, 7.1 and 7.2 video on sampling distributions, and then we'll look at sampling distributions for sample proportions. Um, so let's look at the general idea of a sampling distribution. Um, what you want to keep in mind is that we're going to study what a sampling distribution is so we could get a sense of how to get the best estimate of a population parameter. That means um, a parameter is something we're trying to measure from the population. So that'd be like the whole country. So what proportion of people regularly get at least three hours of exercise a week? The proportion from the population would be the parameter. So P for parameter, P for population. If we didn't have time to ask all 319 million people, um, and we might take an SRS, uh, maybe a stratified random sample of 10,000 people from the 50 different states, our sample would be the 10,000 people. The statistic would be the proportion that we got. Now our goal is to use that st statistic from the sample to estimate the parameter. So we're going to kind of work backwards here. And what if we knew what the parameter was, and then we got different statistics, what would it look like? Uh, so that way we can better understand how to go from the sample to the uh, parameter as we move into confidence intervals in the next section. So keep in mind the difference between a sampling distribution and a population distribution. Remember distribution, the values a variable takes and how often it takes those. Um, one for the population, one for the sampling distribution. And remember, our samples, a key thing here is that chance variation, like random chance, we get different values. So I could take one sample of 10,000, a stratified random sample of 10,000, and find out that 40% of people get at least three hours of exercise. I could take another and find out 42%, another one and find out that 37.3% in my, in my sample. The more of those we take, the more accurate we're getting um, a picture of the parameter, or at least the more likely we're getting a more accurate picture. If we imagine taking every possible sample of 10,000, we'd be getting our sampling distribution. So a graph of the parameter would be the population distribution, whereas the sampling distribution would be all possible samples of the same size from the same population. So we'd look at n equals 10,000. Uh, enough SRSs can approximate that. So in general, we're not going to have a sampling distribution, but if we took 100 samples, we're using that to approximate the sampling distribution because there are an incredible number of possibilities for a sample size of 10,000 from a population of 319 million. You could think about, go ahead and do that, use n choose r, find the number of uh, combinations of 10,000 successes among 319 million population. So we're not going to oftentimes have a sampling distribution, but if we have enough samples, we can use it to approximate the sampling distribution. Just like flipping a coin 10 times, um, I'm not always going to get five heads, but if I kept taking samples of 10, kept taking samples of 10, the amount of times I get more than 50%, the amount of times I get less than 50% will tend to balance each other out. Uh, if we had all possible combinations of that, it'd be the sampling distribution. Uh, one confusion, don't, just, don't confuse the sampling distribution with the distribution of sample data. Distribution of sample data means one sample, and the sampling distribution means all possible samples of the same size. Now if we took the average of that sampling distribution, so here's a bunch of different samples. So let's say we took one sample of 10,000, we got a proportion, a second, a third. Each one of those become a p-hat here, meaning a sample proportion. Each one representing, you know, 40% uh, out of 10,000. And the more of them we get, they should be centered around the true value if we had an SRS um, and if certain other conditions are met. So think about a sampling, a sampling distribution to be a bunch of p-hats, all the different sample proportions, and each one of those represents one sample, just like each dot in our, in our distribution represented one value, and the number of p-hats on top of each other are the, the frequency of those. So those will tend to be centered around the true value if our conditions are met. So think about taking a sample proportion and then graphing every sample proportion. Every one possible is a sampling distribution. Now, an unbiased estimator of a parameter would have a center that equals the true center. That's the goal with taking a stratified random sample. We're trying to take away the, bi the bias. We're trying to get a true picture of what's really, go really going on. And if we do that, the average of all these p-hats, just by chance, we'll get some times that are below, some times that are above. But the average of all of them will be the true value, the true proportion of all the 319 million Americans that actually get three hours of exercise. A biased estimator would be one that either underestimated or overestimated for one reason or another. So this is where kind of the concept of a random sample meets the actual math. Now, we also want 
we want low variability, meaning we want the estimates, each p hat, to be as close to the true proportion as possible. So if we had them vary between 39% and 41%, that's preferable uh, to getting a better picture of the real parameter than having them vary between 30% um, and 50%, which is much more spread out. So an ideal estimator, which is the if we pictured all the possible p hats, the sample proportions we could take, we want them to vary less, you know, so smaller standard deviation, and we want the center of them, their average, to be the true average. And that's our goal and what we're looking at here. So right now we're putting together probability, we're putting together the concepts of bias from chapter four, all to figure out how do we take a sample and make a good estimate. So we want low or no bias and the lowest amount of variability possible. Here's how we would uh, find standard deviation of a sample proportion. Here it is for a sample mean. Response question. So we're looking at a poll conducted by Gallup, uh, the most recent week I could find, that approved, uh, that said Obama's approval rating was 48%. We're going to assume they took an SRS of 10,000 registered voters. Uh, this is the approximate number of adult registered voters in the nation. And let's say that they, due to chance variation, they underestimated his approval rating by 3%. So in reality, it was 51%. Your free response question, you should identify the sample, uh, the statistic, the population, the parameter in this format, and their appropriate values. So pause now and answer that. It's sampling distributions of sample proportions. Um, so the three conditions are what you need to focus on. That's what your multiple choice is going to focus on. Notice that p hat, anything with a hat above it, so we'll have x bar and p hat, those are the sample. Anything without the hat above it refers to the, per, the population. So we're using p hat to estimate p, the true proportion in the population. Uh, the sampling distribution of p hat is how the statistic varies in all possible samples of the same size from the population. And if we have an unbiased estimator, the mean of that sampling distribution, the middle of all those estimates, all those samples, if we average them all out, equals the true mean. And uh, here's what we need to do. The, for p hat, it's the proportion times 1 minus the proportion over n, if we know the true proportion. We're going to look at what happens when we don't know the true proportion. Um, we can use, as long as we sample less than 10% of the population, if we're sampling without replacement, so that the probability holds up of choosing an individual, um, notice that n's in our denominator. So as the as the standard deviation or as the sample size gets bigger, the standard deviation gets smaller, which is preferable in having a less variability. So a bigger sample size is preferable there. Make sure that our shape is correct. We have to sample enough. Um, we have to multiply our sample size times the proportion to be greater than or equal to 10, and the sample size times 1 minus the proportion to be greater than or equal to 10. That's just to make sure that we don't have too much skew and that the standard deviation is small enough so if we have a really small percentage or a really big percentage we could still have an approximately normal distribution. We'll take a look at why that is in class. Conditions we must check. Uh, we need an SRS for the random condition to be met so we have an unbiased parameter and the mean of our sampling distribution p hat equals the mean of our true proportion. So that means just we've reduced the bias we're not getting an overestimate or underestimate from a convenience sample or from under coverage of the population so that lets us know that our estimator should have lower no bias. Uh, to be normal, we need the sample size times the proportion to be greater than or equal to 10, and the sample size times the complement of it to be greater than or equal to 10. Again, that's because if we have a very small proportion or high proportion, we need a big sample size to have a small enough standard deviation. And finally, for our independent condition to hold up, uh, we're, when we're sampling without replacement, we can only sample less than 10% of the population. So if I have a sample size of 600, I can't sample more than 60, or that condition is no longer met, and I can't calculate the standard deviation accurately. So we need all three of those to be met in those ways, and that's what your multiple choice is about. So take this opportunity to pause, read the summary for 7.1 and 7.2 in your book, and then here's your multiple choice. Okay, we're looking at the same poll as we looked at in your free response. We found a 48% approval rating. I would like you to check the random, normal, and independent conditions. Are they all met so we could proceed? Is one of them violated? Is two of them violated? And how so? So right now, go through 7.1, uh, the summary, and 7.2 in your book. Pause here, answer um, the appropriate multiple choice answer, and then turn in your homework. Make sure to click send me a copy of my responses so that you receive confirmation you turned it in and have something to study from.